Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Ring of Honor Wrestling TV show review of us, the British Fist. Gotcha. As you guys all may already know out there, I am Mr. Parkin, and this out there is the one, the one and only, the one and only, only, only one and one and only, only one. It's NJ. What's up? Say it with a bit more views on them, NJ. What's Time just paused there a little bit, didn't it? But anyway, uh, let's go on to this review. Make sure you guys subscribe up above, like this video, and comment your thoughts on this Ring of Honor Wrestling TV show down in the comment section below if your ears are still audible from NJ's very, very enthusiastic WhatsApp, which may have gone on a little bit too long. Well, you can edit in the link in the box below. Yes, indeed. Uh, so after last week's show, which I believe we, we made a very valid point in the show that and last week's review, that the show was very lackluster in our opinion. It really wasn't doing too much for the ROH product. We really felt that, as, as this show was a show, they did, they had kind of built up that this show really needed to deliver, in our opinion. Your thoughts? Well, after last week's show, you could see that we weren't interested. It didn't really give us a good feeling compared to what we were hoping for in ROH. So yeah. this show, we're looking forward to it because we've got matches announced, something to look forward to, and we're actually going to get great appearances tonight. Yes, some from Kevin Steen. We've been waiting, well... To be honest with you, I still think Steen should have been on the opening show, but we got him two weeks later, so whatever. That's the one thing I've been looking forward to ever since the TV shows are starting. Yeah, we'll get into more detail, but again, we've got video packages than this, so we have a lot to say about this. Recap of the Triple Threat TV title match from Final Battle. Kind of went on a bit too long, but, you know, it kind of tied into... At least it tied into something that was going to happen in the night, which was that um, Mike Bennett versus Jay Lethal TV title match. All we really need to know was the result. We didn't yeah. really need to get the full length highlights no. of the match, but whatever. I don't know why ROH do this. Just make just condense it to like twenty seconds or something. It would be so much more impactful. Just a couple of quick clips, twenty seconds. Give us the winner. That's all we need. Um well, we have words from Mike Bennett with the lovely Maria Playboy cover girl talking about how he's never got a fair shot of the title and tonight he is gonna get a fair shot in a non time limit TV title match. I like how the beginning of RH they all building up to this one match. They had the video package, then this um, backstage thing, and yep. then the match. So I think it led it pretty well. Mike Bennett versus Jay Lethal in a TV title match with no time limit. First thing I want to say here, and I said this once already, but God, Maria, it's so hot. And it's so refreshing to see a hot woman in RH, isn't it? For her to come out in that great outfit again, it, she's doing like what, yeah, she's not wrestling or anything, but she's actually looking good on RH. Definitely, just as good as she was in that other federation up north, WWE. Um, it's, the thing is though, right, this was a no time limit match. The match itself, I thought was very good, mainly because it wasn't a spot fest, it wasn't a high spot. These guys actually went out there, they told a story, um, which, and it was a very, to me, it went on, it didn't, it didn't go long enough in my opinion, it only went nine minutes, but at least it told a decent story. Well, with these two wrestlers, again, the time, it could have gone on a lot more, and you could have had maybe the match have had a bit more story inside it, build up. Because the two great wrestlers that yeah. obviously could make a good match, the length, it could have gone longer, but what we got in those nine minutes was good. It was sure. decent because it told a story, and that's essentially what we want from a wrestling match. No high spot fest, spot monkey bullshit. No. But anyway, I d the only problem I have with this is the fact that what was the point in having a no time limit match when you weren't going to go over the 15 minute time limit in the match? And second of each, secondly, don't you want to kind of build this up to a pay per view? You just have you just teased it a final battle that Bennett could win the TV title. Surely you really want to promote this uh, to a pay per view rather than have a nine minute match with no time limit, which is kind of what you'd be getting at a pay per view. It didn't well, go on long enough. Well, the thing is, with title matches, you do expect title matches mm. to be at pay per views, which we say in like TNA and WWE. Yes. But with this show only having an, an hour, hour. they've got to try and hype it up as yeah. much as they can. So I guess it's okay, but with a match like this, it could have done good for pay-per-view. Yeah, so it got nine minutes. Uh, it was a good way to start the show. I enjoyed this match. It was a good... I thought it was a nice, strong way to start the show with a match for the TV title, a match which kind of has a bit of build behind it. Very true. It's pretty good opening. Yes. Yeah, so decent opener for us uh, up here at the British Fist. And we then get... <laughs> we then get words from Eddie Edwards about Kyle O'Reilly. And this has got to be... Other than Davey and Eddie, this Kyle O'Reilly, Eddie Edwards thing has got to be the most boring... Oh god, this confrontation was boring. It's kind of like, yeah, well, Eddie, Eddie told me this, and I thought I'd come here and tell you that we're going to have a match next week. Oh yes, that is what we're having next week. And to be honest with you, that feud we're having is probably a bit more interesting than Eddie Edwards and Kyle O'Reilly. I, I appreciate Kyle O'Reilly came in and was a bit robust, but god, this confrontation was boring. Again, they're trying to get their point across that there's something there, but it just didn't give us like, oh, I can't wait to see this. Like, and, like, why, why doesn't? Okay, here's a little tip, ROH. 
Why not make Eddie Edwards attack Kyle O'Reilly in the backstage area? That might have us hyped up for this matchup a little bit next week, a bit more. Because when it comes to wrestling shows, having backstage attacks would have hyped up mm. more stuff, got us more interested. Instead of just talk to each other, which they're not the best talkers, so it just didn't do that much justice for us. Yep. Fortunately, the theme of the night, uh, that would change the theme of the night because, you know, we had a lot of hostage talk in this in the rest of the show. And it started off with no more than... Mr. Wrestling himself, the actual wrestling god of ROH, the top, the so-called top guy, as he so put it, Kevin Steen in an in-ring segment with Kevin Kelly, and he rids, he rids Kevin Kelly. So he's like, "Yeah, hold my gum and fuck off, Kevin Kelly." That was a, that was a great way to start this segment, wasn't it? What an entertaining segment this was. No surprise, it's Kevin Steen. And the big thing is. The importance of this was he's win a whole year for this moment, yeah. so he's going to make this moment good, and obviously he's going to make his point across to the other RH wrestling fans. Yeah, I don't know why we needed to recap a final battle. We've already had one at the start of the last TV show. Why not just save that one for this rather than doing it on the f first TV show? But anyway, we basically get Steam grabbing the mic from Kevin Kelly, talking about what kind of wrestling promotions keep their top guy at home. Basically, you know, he's talking about Cornette and his bum boy, Davey Richards, and this is the kind of thing that will get me interested in a Davey Richards title match. Not stupid MMA Dan Seven bullshit, but Kevin Steen going out there and saying, I want to take that title from Davey Richards because he represents everything that I don't feel is right in this company. And I think we're quite behind him, aren't we? Do we like Davey Richards as champion? Has he had an interesting title reign? No, there's not a lot from him. He's had exactly. these matches that were big at the moment. They didn't really fall anywhere. Well, Kevin Steen, his words... Just the way he spoke yeah. and how aggressive he was about what is going to happen, we got really behind and really interested. Yeah. Really looking forward to their match against each other. It's, um, well, at some point down the road, I imagine it will happen. But this whole, then Cornette comes out and you get an, it's really interesting um, where they're kind of jibing at each other and giving each other cheap shots um, on the mic, of course, between Kevin Steen and Cornette. It kind of reminds you of that whole sort of like guy in a bigger position versus guy who wants to try and prove himself like McMahon Austin in a kind of in a kind of very minor way. It was a really interesting confrontation between these two, wasn't it, on the mic? Well, having him come out was the right thing. So obviously, they have this big thing going on between each other. And he, obviously, corner as you say. Mm -hmm. And again, he really brings out... They, bring, they seem to bring out the best of each other in this segment. So I'm going to say it was a good thing for both of them. Yeah, it was a good segment. I really did enjoy the segments. The way Steen talks and the way he's holding the cost the company hostage and stuff like that and trying to get that belt from Davey Richards, Jim Cornette's bum boy, going against everything that, you know, the typical ROH fan would like and going with everything that a typical mainstream fan like us would really like. There's two things I want to quickly say. Go on. It's that the way it was going, he says that it's going to be a worse nightmare when he actually does get hold of the title and he's going to keep it and he's going to Please get the title. It. Please get the title. Something to look forward to. And the other thing is that I was disappointed about is the fans would seem to cheer for Davey Richards oh, he's the fan. instead of... Kevin Steen, which I'm thinking with Kevin Steen being as big as he is mm. and coming back to ROH, I thought the fans would be a bit more lively for this. But Well, let's face it, typical ROH fans who love great in-ring quality will always prefer a guy like David Richards over a guy like Kevin Steen who has, you know, character, uh, could tell a good story, is interesting, and all those great qualities that are needed to make a show very interesting. So I guess fans are always going to cheer for guys like David Richards because David Richards versus Eddie Edwards was a fantastic match, way better than Steve Carino versus Kevin Steen, which actually fucking meant something, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know, but the way it is, Kevin Steen, just hopefully in time, people are going to get behind him more like we are, and he'll get the cheers and the crowd that he needs. And the main thing about this segment was Cornette is banning the power driver from ROH, which is a little bit disappointing, but at the same time, it means that Kevin Steen has to find different ways of putting his opponents away, which I think could be interesting heading into a match, maybe with David Richards at some point. Eventually that match will come, and to build up to it, he's going to try... Find a new finisher, yeah. and it's just going to be a good build for it. I wonder what it's going to be. Please be like the Kevin Steen killer or something like that. That would be awesome. But anyway, after this segment, we go straight from a great segment with so much interest to an Inside ROH segment. You know, I would really, just before I go into this, these segments just... I mean, this wasn't that bad of a segment, I thought. It's just that, god damn, this went on five minutes. It just kills so much time, which could have been added to the main event. I guess with our show, the way they cramped so much in this, in little short segments, yeah. it was good, but at the same time, I'm not a fan of Inside RH, so... Get rid of all the pay-per-view stuff. I mean, they have... Every advert, they have pay-per-view. And then after that, another pay-per-view thing. And then another pay-per-view thing. Get rid of all that, and just... Then you'd have more time for the fucking main event, which we didn't feel going for that long. But the Inside RH segment itself had some decent stuff in it. Briscoes versus House of Truth, which is built for a match, a match which we never saw, is next week. And they, then, they, then in the same locker room, they have the Briscoes talking about saying that they're going to take care of business and that there's going to be a $5,000 side bet. Well, 
from what we can make up what they said, yeah. Yeah, but the, I mean, the Briscoes are fucking entertaining, aren't they? Just, yeah. Damn boys are out there and they're talking about all this and shooting chickens and shooting bitches and going out to the top. I mean, they're interesting, aren't they? I like the Briscoes. They are interesting, but yeah. obviously I could make up what they've seen some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, the accents. But So we got that match for next week. We got uh, a Rick Davey, it would seem to us, I can't remember, Davey Richards versus Jay Lethal for the, uh, is, a, is in a match next week. So you got the world champion versus the TV champion. That could be a good match. I might be entertained by that match. Well, in the past, we've seen champion versus champion in other yeah. organisations. So for this one to have it, it's going to be, I think, an interesting match. We have two good wrestlers mm. going against each other. So they'll put on a good match, I think. Yeah, and then after that, we have an injury update from the All Night Express. Basically talking about how the injury has stopped their progress to the title. And I think I think they were on the fast track to those titles when I was watching it earlier this year. And we get the, the, the Titus is out for four months and... Briscoes versus the Young Bucks is going to be at the 10th anniversary show. That's the first match signed, I believe. First match signed over the, you know, the, the world title match. Okay, it is interesting, another title match. Mm. At least it did its job. I mean, I say that it, it was five minutes long, but at least we got some matches built and some inter some semi-interesting stuff. Young Bucks. What's yeah, it? What? one segment, hello, Young Bucks. Straight oh, after, after that, another segment. It's like, what? It's like you just, had, just ended the segment with Young Bucks, and this is how cheap ROH are. Soon as they, and then they go back to another segment with the Young Bucks. And this time they're trying to flirt with the interviewer. It's like, that was quite funny. I thought, do you, kind of, do you want me to show you a good time tonight? That was actually quite entertaining, I thought. The thing is, they said roughly talking about their championship yeah. thing. So they repeat themselves. Pretty yeah, much. The, the only difference is, is the, uh, the flirting. interviewer. Yeah. Who was hot, by the way. She was. Bad. Another woman in ROH, which is hot. Bloody hell, there's two hot women in ROH. Where's Sarah Del Rey when you need her? Need her. But anyway, moving on to the main event. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, before we go on to that, what did you think of that ROH, the whole ROH segment? It's more filler, I guess, but at least it's given us some matches and stuff. The inside ROH, like I said at the beginning, with only an hour show, they need to fit in as much as they can without having too many matches and stuff. So you crammed them much in, but it's just filler. Yeah, essentially, and it kind of led to our main event being a bit short as well. We had the world's greatest tag team coming out. Charlie Haas getting on the mic and saying that they want the Briscoes and he comes out and he, he sort of actually acknowledges the fact that they actually told him that time was cutting short, so make it quick. Um, which I guess explained this main event being short, but at the same time, you could have taken out a lot of that filler and made this main event a lot longer, in my opinion, and made it feel a little bit more like a main event. Because in my opinion, the TV title match should have been the main event on this show. Yeah, with this, again, the way they came out and had their uh, segment in the ring talking, you could tell by the match was going to be yeah. short, but the match itself... Too short. Too short, and I'm thinking they demand a tired match. They have the whole uh, cornet thing, and yeah. it just wastes more time. Then the match comes, and uh, I don't know. They demand this match, and look what happens. I'll say this. ROH. Next time Ross Great Tag Team are in an in-ring talking segment, keep Charlie Hass on the mic, because I'm way more interested in what he has to say in a heel perspective than I am Shelton Benjamin, who's just a little bit bland in my opinion, but there we go. Um, they talk about they're going to hold the show hostage until they get the Briscoes, then the Briscoes come out and they have that match that you're talking about, but like I said, they, put it there. they should have made this a lot longer, especially as a main, especially for a main event. At least make it a bit longer. I mean, on this show, we had 13 and a half minutes of wrestling, so at least make it a little bit longer. It really did seem rushed, and Shelton Benjamin gets DQ'd after hitting the Briscoes that's, with a steel chair. That's the they demand, rematch. They demand this match. Cornette <laughs> saying how he was unsure at giving it, then he's making it. It's a tight match. And then you get Shelton Benjamin, who wants this match, yeah. DQ's him. I know it's a rush time, but still. I was, think I think what they're trying to do is hype up their, their, to this this view to the showdown in the sun night one. And to be honest with you, after what happened to find about, I really don't want to see a match between these two. Not again. They've lost their championship. Move on to a different tag team. Yeah. I can understand them getting their rematch, but in a four and a half minute main event, really? It's just not a great way to end the show. Like it. the, 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 it's, the, the mic stuff was okay. The in-ring stuff was okay. It's just they didn't get enough time to really tell a story or anything like that. It was just too short. It was indeed. Overall thoughts on this show? Much better than last week, would you say? It was a lot better than last yeah. week. And thing is, up to the inside of RH, I was with the show. Same. It was going well. And then afterwards... Again, because of the time and because of how they had to rush it and the filler, it just I just thought, okay, this is not what, how I want a show to end. Yeah, I mean, the opener was really good. I thought that was a very entertaining match just because it it did tell a story. It did, you know, do what it was supposed to. Um, I, I imagine we'll be seeing those two at an iPay-per-view at some point soon. I wouldn't mind seeing it, but they're kind of giving it away on free TV with it here. 
Um, the in the the Kevin Steen segment was really entertaining, and like you said, the beginning bit of the show, the first like what forty minutes or something like that, was it? First forty minutes were pretty good, and I was really entertained. And, and then the Inside RX segment comes, and it always seems to go downhill. And this the main event being rushed really let the show down because they were kind of like going off the air, like they were kind of like going off the air rather than saying, right, next week we've got this lined up for you, and it's going to be fantastic. They're going right, 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 next week we've got this lined up. Go, go, bye. You know yeah, I, mean? I was really disappointed. Like again, it's not a bad show. It's nah. just the ending. It really took away everything we got throughout the show, mm. then it just quick rush at the end. Yep. It did let the show down a little bit, but it's still much better than last week, though. Just because we had Kevin Steen and that match at the beginning was pretty good. So. Yeah, Kevin Steen stole mm. the show across yep. the last week. He's just been beer packed. It's not been the same for a guy like Kevin Steen. He should have made the appearance. Mm -hmm. In fact, he got his appearance, but went a year for this moment. He just made the show. So, ROH, little tip from the British Fist. If you want us to watch the TV shows a little bit more and take them a little bit more seriously, have Kevin Steen in your TV show a little bit more often in the ring. That's what we'll, all we'll say about that. To me, it was a it was a good show up until the in, the inside R H segment, but I'll still say it was an okay show overall. If I was going to grade this, I'll give it like a B minus, something like that. Just a thing because the, the only thing that led down was that was after the inside R H segment, which was about a third of the show. Everything else was pretty good to me. Yeah, pretty good, and mm. obviously we've got matches announced for next week yeah. and a sun direction. We did say. Uh, Kevin Kelly said that next week we're going to get more hype for the yeah, uh, 10th anniversary show yeah so that's given us more to look forward to next week so well done there. yeah indeed so you've heard the thoughts on this Ring of Honor wrestling TV show from us the British Fist Gungeon. Mr. Parkin and MJ what's up MJ17 by the way if you want to subscribe to his personal channel Mr. Parkin01 for my channel um Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. MJ you usually do the outro why am I doing it go on you do it thank you very much people <laughs> this has been a good a good version of RH all I can say now Leave your comments in the competition below. Tune in for next week when we we'll be reviewing it again. Until next time, from Mr. Parkin and me, NJ. Till next time. Goodbye.